Okay, well, I'm gonna introduce our first speaker, but as a, as a brief, what we've decided to do is also do the M emceeing in a democratic way. Usually at the end of an event, you have a small acknowledgement for all the people who put it together. This time we wanna see each of the in each of the speakers also introduced by someone that they might have worked with or who's taking their class. So, so just be prepared for that. I will introduce the first one that Dean just uh, talked about today. Now, Bhaskar Chakravarti is also a dean at the school. He's the dean of the International Business Program. He has a background that's almost exactly fitted for our theme, which is technology or media for global social change. Right? And his resume is there. By the way, we're not distributing papers because with the theme, we have a website that's very mobile friendly. So if you want to hear, you want to say, read a bit more about the speakers, just go to our website and there it will be. Okay? But I will just say one thing about Bhaskar in the last two years. I must have met him 10 to 12 times, seen him around the school a lot. Like any dean, his schedule is full. I've never once seen you in a bad mood. So I don't know how you do it. You know, you're always pleasant, you're always warm to everyone, and I think it's just fitting that we, we start this program with you. Thank you, and a big round of applause, please, for Bhaskar Chakravarti. I'm glad to get that applause out front. It's always good to get uh, an advance payment, you know, regardless of what happens afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the one from everybody. Uh, so this uh, uh, talk was, uh, Dean changed the title of the talk, uh, so, but I'll stick to my own title, which is, it's about flying cars in the human condition. Now, technologists inherently are a grumpy lot. They're never satisfied. They're never happy with uh, what they see around them. And so they're constantly trying to tinker with the world around them. So this guy over here is uh, Peter Thiel, is the uh, founder of a company called PayPal. How many of you know PayPal? Okay. And he's also funded a whole bunch of other companies that all of you know just as well. Oh, okay. So just start right, again. Right on the top, it's not on. Okay. There you go, technology. <laughs> Lesson number one, turn your mic on. No wonder technologists are such a grumpy lot, because most of us aren't competent enough to use technology in the way it's supposed to be used. So here's a guy, Peter Thiel, uh, founder of PayPal, and uh, uh, investor in many companies, including Facebook and a whole bunch of others, uh, who complained that we asked for flying cars, and instead, we got 140 characters. There's a bunch of people at Berkeley uh, protesting a talk that Peter Thiel gave. Now, we are living in uh, a time where technology is moving faster and faster, accelerating at a pace that we can, uh, uh, we can barely keep up with, including the fact that uh, we uh, need to switch on and off so many different devices that we can never keep track. The Industrial Revolution, which uh, pretty much was at least uh, the starting point of the modern technological era, has been superseded by what we are living through right now, which is an Industrial Revolution that is at least a thousand times, at least a thousand times as powerful as uh, the first industrial revolution. We think about uh, uh, the fact that in the United Kingdom there are about 10 million people whose uh, 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 you know, gross uh, uh, product was doubled over the course of 150 years during the industrial revolution. And now in China about a hundred times that many people uh, and uh, uh, their gross uh, product was doubled in 15 years. So, you know, just a thousand times the acceleration and the mass uh, that we saw in the, the first industrial revolution. So we're living in times where technology is moving much, much faster uh, than we have ever experienced before and that we can ever imagine. And really, what we have to think about is not only how complicated and how fast and how fascinating all this technological change is, but also what is it doing to the state of the human condition? Where are we headed? Are we inherently going to be better off? Or are we creating more problems than uh, we had to start with? So a good place to start is this picture right here. It's called the human condition. It's made by this guy, the Belgian surrealist, René Magritte. And René Magritte, one of the, you know, uh, quotes that I love about uh, uh, the many memorable quotes that he has is, 
To be a surrealist means barring from your mind all remembrance of what you've seen and being always on the lookout for what has never been. So I find his painting, The Human Condition, a great place to start and imagine all the things that have never been. So here is something that has never been. A flying car, Peter Thiel, we have news for you. We do have flying cars. In fact, a few are just about to hit the market. But we have more changes in the offing. Technology is going to replace doctors, apparently, if IBM had their way. And uh, they are developing uh, the intelligent machine that is going to diagnose everything that's wrong with you and tell you what to do uh, to uh, make yourself better. We have technology that's changing people's lives around the world. This is a picture from a city uh, I grew up in, which uh, doesn't look like a particularly orderly or a smart or a technologically enabled city right now. But uh, uh, increasingly, uh, there is a policy in the country of India to uh, uh, create a network of so-called smart cities, whatever that means in the Indian context. I can't even imagine. But apparently, technology is going to uh, make uh, these chaotic, some of the most chaotic parts of the world, exceedingly smart. Technology is going to take all those people out of the picture and replace them with uh, 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 computers, robots, automated systems that is going to do our work for us and leave us uh, to wonder uh, what to do with all that free time and maybe get the uh, robot to uh, you know, help us fill some of that free time. Technology is going to be that magic wand that we already carry in our pocket and it could do, it can do a few things today and it will do a whole bunch of things and practically everything we ever wanted to do in the future, including pay our bills, including open our car doors, including maybe summoning a car for us and we don't even need to have a car, including waking us up in the morning and uh, putting us to sleep at night and monitoring what we do while we sleep at night. That magic wand, it's already there. And by the way, that magic wand is not just in our pockets for those of us who have pockets. This is a magic wand that has found its way all the way to the bottom of the economic pyramid. Everybody is going to be technologically enabled, and they're going to have that magic wand in their hands, in their pockets, in the folds of their clothes. What an amazing world. And it's such an amazing world that we live till we are at least 150 years old to enjoy the benefits of technology, according to some of the smartest people around, and this is a gentleman by the name of Ray Kurzweil, who intends to live at least that long, and uh, is uh, dreaming up all kinds of technologies uh, that will help us live that long, and enjoy the uh, benefits of all these wonderful things that we've got around us. However, that is one vision of the human condition. Here's another painting by René Magritte, and it's also called the human condition. And on this canvas, I can paint a different picture. The more the digital surroundings we have, the bigger the digital edifice we build, the more doors and windows that edifice will have for people to climb in and take our stuff, to watch what we do, to watch what we do before we go to sleep, to watch what we do while we are asleep, to take stuff from our homes and from our lives while we are asleep. So the more digitally enabled we are, we could be more digitally vulnerable. All that technology is creating an accelerating demand for stuff, and that's going to bounce against finite resources. And at some point, that collision is not going to be terribly pretty. All those smart cities could end up looking like this because we're all piling up on top of each other in less and less available space. Or it could look like this. Or it could look like this. These are all slums from three different continents. They all look the same. The human condition doesn't change a whole lot when we are all crammed on top of each other in this technologically enabled, wonderful set of clusters called megacities where we're all headed and we already are 
uh, uh, there, uh, at least most of us are in these mega cities or in some kind of cities. In terms of the helping hand, uh, we may all need a helping hand because we're all, as we get uh, economically better off, technologically better off, we're also gonna have fewer children. We are not gonna be children for long. We're gonna get older and we're gonna need a lot of help on lots of things and maybe technology's role will be to prop us up for those 150 years that we need to survive for. Remember that magic wand that does all kinds of things? Well, it turns out that there may be still vestiges of the past that will be in our pockets. My wallet looks like this. It's actually not, it doesn't look like this because of the cash that's in it. It's mostly <laughs> receipts that I haven't submitted for reimbursement as yet. <laughs> Remember the bottom of the pyramid? The Maasai holding up their phones with their magic wands? Well, it's possible that that bottom of the pyramid is a giant global pyramid scheme where those of us who are technologically enabled are shifting our dirty industry to another part of the world and the folks with the dirty industry are using that a different form of technology and shifting the even dirtier stuff to the next level down and so on. And eventually we keep stripping that bottom of the pyramid, uh, stripping the resources out of that bottom of the pyramid in order to enable those of us who are you know, technologically a little bit more sophisticated at the higher and higher echelons. And we may eventually reach that point where uh, just like Rodin's Thinker on the cover of a recent Economist magazine, we are left to ponder that have we reached the end of the road? Despite all our celebration of flying cars and all these wonderful technological objects, these fantastical objects, are we ever gonna invent anything as useful as that thing I'm sitting on right now? Imagine indoor plumbing. Imagine indoor plumbing. Imagine somebody coming up with something that comes even close. Are there still opportunities open for us to reinvent indoor plumbing? Well, heck, there is. That's a reinvention of something called a flying toilet, a plastic bag in which people do their business in many parts of the world, particularly in East Africa, and toss it. Therefore, the flying toilet. And this is a, 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 a company called Peepu, which actually allows you to do that in a somewhat sanitary way. We won't go into the details. But technology has found its way, even in the reinvention of indoor plumbing in many parts of the world. So there you have it, different visions of the human condition. And technology is playing a role in all of them. Which vision are we gonna be a part of? What is our future? Well, that's up to us to figure out and for us to navigate. It's eventually gonna be a messy mix of uh, these uh, bookend situations. And uh, technology is always gonna keep us from shuttling between the flying car and the flying toilet. And the human condition is gonna be bookended by the flying car that the Peter Thiels of the world are gonna be pouring more and more money into and the flying toilet, which unfortunately will continue to exist for the remaining 150 years or the remaining 100 years of our lives. And we'll constantly be looking for solutions to getting rid of that flying toilet. Thank you.